Today we will hopefully be crafting piles of rubble for your Dungeons & Dragons campaign or your wargaming pleasure. Hello there, this is Art Jeremiah. I'm an artist, terrain builder, and miniature painter. I've been doing this kind of thing for over two decades now. Really longer if the artist thing I've been training since I was a kid. But anyway, if this is your first time at my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon below so you don't miss anything. Um, there should be lots of great things to come. I plan on doing this continually. Um, also click the like button for my video analytics and let's get started. For this build we will be making 10 piles of rubble of various sizes. I want the pieces to have a black bottom and sit flush on a flat surface. I chose to use some thick construction paper for that task. This is one of my regular builds, therefore I have templates so I don't have to measure them out. Measuring tends to slow me down and takes away from my creative process. So even though these are relatively simple shapes, they help me for builds like this. These templates are meant to be used on a one inch grid for games like Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder. The sizes I use are 1x1, 2x1, 2x2, and 3x3 inches. 3x4, 2x3 inches, not 3x3 inches. Anyway, I'm using a mechanical pencil this time, but sometimes I use a white gel pen to trace the shapes onto the black construction paper. Now I cut out each of the traced shapes. I cut about a centimeter outside of the line I traced. Nothing too complex, I just want to leave enough room outside of each shape to securely latch onto the construction paper. I want to say, if you're just getting started and some of the builds you keep coming across seem like daunting tasks, don't get down. Rather than compare, build yourself up through small improvements. We all start somewhere. I remember the first terrain I ever built, way back when I was getting interested in miniatures and Warhammer. There was this little after-school group of nerds who gathered in a club appropriately named the Gamers Guild. I'd been hanging out with some of the kids who got a hold of a box set that consisted of Bretonians and Lizardmen. They invited me to play one day. One of them was nice enough to let me play with his skink archers. Despite getting slaughtered by knights on horseback, I wanted more. So with the help of my nerdy friends, I decided to play Skaven which by the way was a horrible choice for a kid on a budget, though I did manage to get an army book and a regiment of clan rats for about $30. Anyway, here in a minute I will get into how my buddies designated me the terrain builder. Then I use masking tape to tape each piece to the board. I tape all the way up to the line I traced and will use it as a guideline when gluing down my piles of rubble. This step is mainly to prevent some of the warping to the construction paper when it gets wet. Help support this channel by liking this video. Also, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon below if you want to see more videos like this one. I use a hot glue gun to start gluing down the pieces of rubble onto the construction paper bases. I really go liberal with the hot glue, especially on the larger pieces, as this will help stabilize them and keep them from falling apart or breaking. You don't really have to use a hot glue gun for this step, you can just use normal white PVA glue or whatever you have on hand. Though I would use foam board in the case of that. Um, that said, using a hot glue gun is cheap enough and will prevent excessive warping to the construction paper. Also, one benefit of hot glue is that it dries extremely quick compared to white PVA glue. The foam I am using is just random bits of leftover pieces and ends I have from other builds. I break them into three different sizes, large, medium, and small, in order to add some variety to the build. If the foam pieces look too square, I try to chip the edges with my fingernail or a tool of some sort in order to give them a more natural rock appearance. Despite looking like it would be quick, gluing on all the little bits and pieces of foam, rock, and rubble is the most time consuming part of this build. I regularly build the same build and it took me over half an hour to complete this step. I could have just glued and dumped pieces of foam over the glue, but it would have looked chaotic. The extra work to me is really worth the effort. So anyway, back to my story. While playing, these kids were like, hey, you're an artist. You should build some terrain for us. I expressed that it was something I'd never done before and they assured me that anyone could do it. You can make it out of anything you like. They just need to have obstacles for the troops and have cover and stuff. So yeah, that built me up some. I got home right after school and looked around in my room for what I had. Pretty much just had glue, cardboard, and acrylic paint. So that is what I focused on. I wasn't much for three-dimensional stuff back then, but I got to work. 
I started crafting several pieces all at the same time. I think it was a house and two hill structures or something like that. They were all boxy and not organic whatsoever. The paint jobs looked excellent though. They were all a cobbled brickwork look with flowering vines all over. I was proud of what I created and looked forward to showing my friends the next day after school. More on that in a minute. I used an old brush to apply watered down PVA glue to many of the cracks and crevices, as well as around the edges of the base. I then sprinkled play sand over the piece of the terrain, ensuring to hit all the spots I painted the glue on. I do this layer both to add more detail and visual interest to the piece, as well as to make each piece more durable. Have you liked this video yet? Please do me a favor and smash that like button so we can boost the analytics of this video and get it out there to more people. Thanks so much. In the description below, I have links to my Etsy and eBay if you want to check out some of the terrain that I'm selling on there. Also, more recently, I designed a battle mat, which I sell on there. So, links are in the description. I undercoat each piece of terrain in a thick layer of black. I use a mixture of black paint, white PVA glue, gloss varnish, and a little bit of water. It makes for a goopy consistency, but will give each piece of terrain a hard shell and help hold the sand and rubble together. You can use black paint, just black paint, but it will turn out more fragile. If you are looking to save a little bit of time or just don't like using a brush, check out the links in my description to foam friendly spray paint. It doesn't melt foam, you can spray it as close as you want to the foam. I use it all the time, it's like a miracle. I use a brush to apply medium to dark brown paint to the pieces. I want some of the black paint still showing through so I do not cover each piece completely with the brown. Rather, I slop the brown on randomly. Thicker in some spots and thinner in other spots. This will work to vary the tone of the layers of paint to come and give the stone a more realistic appearance. With a piece of sponge, I liberally dab each piece with gray and a beige acrylic craft paint. I apply both colors at the same time with the same piece of sponge. I do this by squirting both paints next to each other and dabbing my sponge in both colors at once. When applying the paint, it should give a nice mottled appearance that will add more visual interest and detail to the terrain. I use a piece of cardboard as a palette as I can just throw it away later and not worry too much about cleanup. I notice at the end there are some spots I could not reach very well with the sponge, so I use a dabbing motion with some gray paint and do some touching up to each of the pieces. Okay, so I was proud of what I created, and I look forward to showing my friends my freshly built and painted terrain after school. I pulled out what I built and proudly set them on the table. The look they gave my artwork was a puzzled frown. They weren't pleased at all. The more critical of the two friends said, That's not quite what I was expecting. Being the people pleaser I was, I reached for the terrain and said, If they tell me exactly what they want, I can do it. They were quick to decide that it was okay to play with the terrain I built. They even decided that it looked good. It was just not the type of terrain they were expecting. They decided to play a happy game with the terrain, and though my feelings were hurt, I decided to look into terrain building a little bit more. I did let their opinions get me down, but I did also eventually conquer that, and now I've built literally hundreds, maybe even thousands of pieces of terrain, and I'm proud of what I can do. I then apply a heavy black wash to each piece, making sure I get in all the recesses of all the rubble. The black wash I use consists of water, black ink, gloss varnish, and just soap. I've also used just watered down black paint to achieve a similar effect, though I like the transparency I get when I use the mixture I listed. Also, just to note, this step isn't really necessary. Um, it just adds a little bit more detail, a little bit more shadowing to all the cracks and crevices. So it works really well on builds like this. I dry brush each piece with a creamy off-white paint. It is better to use a cream color rather than white because the warmth will give it a more pleasing and realistic appearance. Though you can use white if that's what you have. Or you could add a little bit of yellow and brown to your paint if you're into color mixing. If you like what I'm doing here, check out my Patreon through the link below. I am offering a limited time discount to my Etsy shop even if you just go to my Patreon and read the description. So go check that out. Also, you can become one of my Patreon patrons and receive more benefits for as little as $1.
Now that I have the majority of the masking tape off and every piece is loose and free standing, I take a pair of scissors and trim the spare construction paper off. I cut through just a tiny bit of the outside edge of where I glued the place in so that I have a nice strong edge to the bases. Also, I try to give the edges a, round, a rounded organic look. I just like the way it looks and feel it gives a realistic touch and blends in better with other pieces of scenery. Another way for you to support this channel is through clicking on an affiliate link below. I have several links to supplies I buy or use or books that I recommend. Most are links to Amazon and even if you just follow my link to Amazon and buy your regular purchases, I will get a small commission. I then paint on a generous coat of matte varnish. Sometimes I use, sometimes I do use spray matte varnish. But if you use spray, just be careful to hold the can at a distance and build up the varnish in light layers. Otherwise, there is a chance of melting the styrofoam. So this build's over now. If you really want to support me, the absolute best thing you can do for me is hitting that like button below. I'd really appreciate that. Also, if you really like this kind of video, I have more to come. So subscribe and hit that bell below. That's. Pretty much all I got. Thank you.